Hey folks, thanks for stopping by Kaiser's Castle, grab yourself a coffee, tea, soda, and or not libation. As you sit down on my big orange couch, grab yourself all those things and chill out because tonight, great dude, I met while taking long uh, strolls through the boiler room. Uh, his name is Zod and that's what it, his handle is. And really good dude from a different country and stuff, but lived here in the U.S. and knows the U.S. intimately. Great, great guy. And uh, went back to Europa and because of situations had to stop in one country for a minute. And I'll just let him continue on with that part because... He will tell you as much as he wants to tell you or as little, but he will tell you what the current issue is that he is going through at this point with the uh, lockdown bullshit and other things. With that being said, welcome to the show, brother. How you doing, man? I am good, Kaiser. Thank you. So I guess uh, this is my first time doing this, but I feel like it's very important to get these things out. Um, I lived in the United States for 20 years. I had a great career in healthcare until COVID started. I was confronted to make a decision that was against my principles, my morals, and decided to kiss that career goodbye. Um, my wife is an Austrian citizen. We decided to move here permanently, basically just to be closer to her family, since I didn't have much family in America. And we thought we might get some peace from this COVID nonsense um, in Austria. And having been here for almost a year now, I've come to realize that it's going to get really, really bad here very soon. And that's why I'm here. Yep. We'll just continue on with the story on the silliness because, and that's all we're going to refer to it as. We're not going to even bring up the Rona again. Uh, everybody understands, especially this is the one thing that only Fox News is reporting. Nobody else is about the riotous situations, the mass uprisings in Europa over this because a lot more people are waking up and in America. You know what? The media is not covering it, just like they're not covering with another guest I'll have on on what's going on in Afghanistan, and he's going to out that. So you explain to the people what you're seeing live and on the ground, brother. Well, I'm just going to start out with a microcosm uh, from my own immediate circle of friends and families. And then put it in contrast with the big picture, what a lot of your listeners probably saw on YouTube or Odyssey or wherever. Um, we, you know, we all want to get along, right? We all have family and friends who may have different opinions than us. And some of them are pro stabbies and others might be against it. And that's fine and dandy. Nobody says that's wrong. Whatever you want to do, it's your life problem here is, uh, and I'm sure in America too, but I think here it's a little bit more pronounced because the, the population, maybe not just in Austria, but in Western Europe as a whole, is very tied to the mainstream. I think the mainstream propaganda in, in TV and radio here is, is way more ridiculous than in America. And so if you try to kind of go against the stream and be like I was in the United States, you get a lot more resistance. And I'm not saying that I'm alone here, but definitely very few and far in between. <clears throat> and uh, you're starting to notice tears and cracks. I mean, that's been ha slowly happening throughout the past year, but ever since, uh, I don't know if your listeners are familiar with what's been going on, but basically we had a uh, chancellor here who promised us that there's never going to be mandatory jabbies. And um, all of a sudden, lo and behold, two months ago, I think, uh, they cooked up some corruption BS on him, and he officially resigned over it. And they implemented a temporary bonus counselor, 
And a month later that he was sworn in, he basically told us, oh, well, you know what? We're going back into lockdown and starting in February of next year, the vaccines are going to become mandatory nationwide for everybody. Sounds like you got your... And uh, ever since that happened, there's been an escalation. Sounds like you got your own let's go, go Brandon moment. Let's go, Brandon moment. That dude had to be one of Schwab's well, boys. Easy here, but... Right. It's not that easy here because, um, like I said, there were cracks and tears before. And now that this has been implemented, the cracks and tears between the pros and the cons, the people who are pro jabbies and against them, have gone to the extreme that we have situations where friends that have been around us for years, sometimes even decades now, all of a sudden won't talk to us anymore. People have straight up uh, gotten into arguments uh, at the table over a few beers to the point where people left, uh, you know, tears were shed, uh, just things that, that people here aren't used to, that the type of conflict that people here just aren't used to in social uh, circles. And um, now that's building over and escalating, obviously, because our situation, our microcosm is multiplied by many families and many, many people, not just in Austria, but all of uh, Europe. Now that's building out on the streets. And we've had some pretty big um, demonstrations in Vienna and in Graz and, you know, Rotterdam and Belgium, Poland and all over Europe. We've had a lot of people going out on the streets. But those people, you know, when compared to, you know, their counterparts with BLM or such type of protests in America, don't get this, the same type of treatment, neither from the media nor from the police. Uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with what happened in Rotterdam. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Anyone can, can audio see it or, or YouTube it. And I'm afraid, I'm honestly afraid for my life, for my family's life, for our safety. I'm not going to take the stabby, neither is my immediate family. And from what I've read, they're planning to implement um, monetary penalties up to 3,600 euros. Um, they're not detailing on whether, you know, that's going to escalate for for how, however many months you're refusing or if that's going to escalate into being imprisoned for not taking the jabbies. But I'm at a point where I really don't know where to go anymore. Well, and it's scary. It's it's terrifying. I feel you, brother, because you know it, any thinking man, and and even you thought about it. But uh, here's the problem with Austria and Germany, uh, especially. And you know, I'm half German too. Um, besides being a Dago, you know, I'm also a Kraut. Um, here's what I saw with the Germans, and I'm not saying the Italians are any better. Trust me on this. Everybody likes or order. Ordinary. You know what I mean? Um, a societal order. And that's what brought about, and think about this, folks. This was science back then. That's what brought about, um, we can just go back to, um, uh, the NASDAQ, you know, National Socialist Deutsches Abet Pate, which, you know, in America and in England and English speaking countries is the Nazi part. Uh, they use eugenics. That was science. Follow the science, folks. You know, first they start out going after people with mental problems. Then they went after the lame, the disabled, then trade unionists, communists. You know, th this is the same kind of function. And it's the divide and conquer function. Uh, in my opinion, and I want to hear your thoughts on this, what Klaus Schwab is pushing and all the others, um, including Let's Go Brandon, and it sounds like Austria got a let's go Brandon guy. Um, they're all pushing for the lockdown to destroy the West. That's my opinion. You give me your opinion, brother. If you disagree with me, please disagree with me because we can disagree without being disagreeable.
there's nothing to disagree about. You're hundred percent right. And um, I'll give you an example from our immediate circle of family. <clears throat> Uh, an argument that that ensued was, you know, we have a social healthcare system here and basically all of Europe. And one of the arguments that people keep hearing on TV and radio here is that people who don't take the stabbies um, should have to pay for their own ICU beds um, if they get sick with the vid. And um, basically, and and it's scary because there's somewhat uh, a lot of support for that kind of thought and the whole great reset thing that a lot of people don't understand and the problem to to break these things down is when you're arguing with somebody who's completely indoctrinated from one source of news like i said it's a lot worse here than in america at least in america you still have the counter counterweight but here you don't have that here it's all just I said that here you don't have any alternative media, not even the ma mainstream. So, as a, you know, in America you have something like Fox News. Here you don't have that. So, everybody goes by the by the same line, and a lot of people don't have the information that I have to explain to them that the Great Reset is not going to stop with just the jabbies. When you say that somebody shouldn't have an ICU bed because they refused to stab, then I can turn that argument around and say, well, on your green pass app that counts your social credit and people here love to smoke cigarettes and drink beer if you smoke that many cigarettes in a week and drink that many beers and it's all being recorded and you end up with a uh, liver cirrhosis or lung cancer in the hospital maybe you're going to be on the receiving of that policy where they say well sorry we can't give you an icu but because you smoke this many packs of cigarettes in your life and people don't just don't have that 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 Farsight to um to understand that what's being implemented is not just about the the this nonsense with the pandemic, but it's a lot deeper than that. There's you know players like Schwab and Gates and um, all these Marxists that uh, would like to implement a sort of global uh, tech communism where everything is tracked and traced and micromanaged and how much beef you eat is going to contribute to methane gas emissions and your carbon footprint is going to increase. And people who are saying, oh, it's okay that if you don't get the jabbies, you're going to not get any care in the hospital, don't realize that they're going to be denied many different services based on their own lifestyle decisions. And, and that's very difficult to argument here because, like I said, there's only one source of, of news, really, and nobody really bothers to look up on you know, uh, Odyssey or or groups like, you know, private little chat groups where there's alternative information going around. And, and it's very, very hard to argue, argue with these types of people. I totally get it. And it, it's a Stasi system that Stasi would have loved to have had. And I mean that in a real way. Uh, just like the Kroger card. A lot of people don't realize this, even in Europa. Uh, they have the same cards. Those discount cards, well, I can tell you this for a fact. I can also tell you they know where you are if you have a plan and not a throw phone. Uh, I had a throw phone even when I went to a job. And when I made it to Brazil and the other country shut their border, um, here's how easy it was. I get back, my phone was dead. Dead, dead, dead. I've talked about that in another show. Landed, charged it. As soon as there was a minimal charge on it, I get a message, you know, the little sound that happens. And all of a sudden, it was from the CDC saying I had to self-segregate because I was in Brazil, uh, a country known to have COVID outbreaks. That was in March of 2020. March, I said 13th before, I have to correct myself because my wife said it was like the 20-something, 27th or 21st, I can't remember, when I returned home. For some reason, I thought it was the 13th. Um, so I was wrong on that on a previous show. Just because I'm old and my memory's getting bad on certain things. But I'm seeing... Stasi tactics, and that's for real. 
uh, folks, look up. Uh, you can find it on YouTube still. In the lives of others, about Stasi and how they do it. Now imagine, like he said, like Zod just said, on the reel. Uh, you think about this. They can find out how many packs of cigarettes you smoke if you're using, you know, those little cards from Speedway, from Kroger, from wherever, those discount cards. And if you think I'm lying, one day when I was in federal court, I walked over to the municipal court down the road where I live. And I just sat in on some municipal court stuff that was just like divorces. And I hear this lawyer bring up, they subpoenaed the Kroger card. And in my state, this woman was trying to say he's a drunk. And yeah, he bought a six pack of beer every day. That was admitted into evidence. And guess who provided it? It was Kroger. And I'm just telling you, you think you're not being monitored, Everything you do is monitored. You go on, brother. Oh, you're you're absolutely right. And this this scandemic is being used to implement these types of systems. The sad part is that people have so um, have been so scared and panicked by the constant propaganda on the radio. I mean, you turn on the radio here, and I shit you not, every two hours, the first thing you hear is numbers infections oh they won't talk about that because they're basically non-existent but oh man you get those numbers and those positive tests and you put the fear into people and and it's like a programming you know the moment you try to 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 kind of change the view and be like hey man it's not all as it seems there's some other um alter motives being pursued here by very powerful elites that are controlling your politicians and they're not in the interest of your own country Man, it's like, and then another problem here is um, the party system. You know, people complain a lot about the American party system, how you have only Republicans and Democrats and this and that. Well, we do have more parties here, but it's the same exact crap. Instead of the elites controlling the two parties, they're controlling every party here except one. And that one party here basically gets labeled as straight up Nazis, even though they're the only one who are saying this isn't right what's happening and uh, it's against basic human rights and this and that. But because um, the propaganda on the radio is so indoctrinated into people, they don't even want to listen to this party because it has the stigma associated to it. So um, it's very hard to find allies. It's very hard to... And uh, it's strangely enough, I mean, I don't consider myself a leftist or a, uh, or a socialist, but I have found more common ground with full-blown... <laughs> socialists here who are against this than i would have ever imagined it's absolutely bizarre like i i don't understand it but there's always people on all sides of the political spectrum who don't want to put up with this i'm not shocked by it at all because in europa okay uh here here's the thing a regular socialist in europe here's how we have perverted it in america um America, when they talked about liberal, and that's why I even have to edit myself, because here's what ended up happening. And it's the same thing that happened when the Nazis took power. You know, the National Socialist Deutsche Zeit, um, what, what ended up happening was they built coalitions because they had the majority when they got elected. Think Nancy Pelosi being Hitler, okay? Because that's really how he started, you know, Speaker of the House. See how this works? And everybody also forgets what she wears on her lapel pin. That's a fascist. That's a stick, bundle of sticks joined by ropes, except they have an eagle on top. That's still Roman fascist. And in the Senate and the Congress, both houses have the axe that's bound by that because we live under a Roman system okay a republic um, fasces is nothing more than a symbol of power 
and if somebody put a bundle of sticks together with an axe head in the middle of it, uh, back in their day, they would kill them because he's trying to assume Caesar's power. Now, going back to this, uh, that's all esoteric bullshit, and I'm sorry I just dropped that in there, but I needed to say it for a reason. Uh, what, what I'll say is, I'm not shocked by it because it's like a classical Jeffersonian liberal is a socialist in Europa, in Europe. And this is the fact. You know, the Green Party's more of the Marxist, and then you actually have straight up Marxist. And so there's a more defined left and right. And there's still a NASDAQ party. And believe it or not, here's the funny part that everybody fell for. The CDU, Christian Democratic Union, actually started under a woman. I'm mind-dumping her name right now. I'll look it up when he's talking, uh, when Zod's talking. And I'll give you the name, because I can't believe I just mind-dumped her. The Angela Merkel's in. And everybody thinks she's a dummy. She's not. She's a physicist, okay? Uh, she's not dumb. Now, I, does she have Parkinson's or Alzheimer's? Probably now, but when I met her before, a long time ago, um, very brilliant woman. And um, that's all I'll say on her. Um, and that's also the thing, like, I know Biden's Picadillo's, and he also, everybody forgets one thing, the Homeland Security Act. You know who, I'm asking this is odd, and I bet some of you out there will know this. Who wrote the Homeland Security Act when Oliver North was talking back then about continuity of government and Rex 84. Do you know who... It was the same era that a certain senator wrote that. Do you know who that, who that senator was? I don't know. Yeah, it was Joseph Robinette Biden. He's the one who drafted it. That was put in back then. When Oliver North was still around. That's fact. And he was also the one that started labeling black people as criminals. So, see how this runs full circle? It's a long game. People don't understand how Marxists operate. They have to take over the systems of government and academia to even be making a difference. Your thoughts, brother? No, you're absolutely right. Um, what was that KGB uh, defector, um, Yuri Besmanov, was it? Yeah, it's he, Yuri Besmanov. He described it. Yeah. But back to um, what you were saying about uh, classical liberals and, and socialists here, that's exactly the vibe I got talking to this person. I was like, you don't sound socialist at all. At least not my my picture of socialists from back in America. They sounded very, you know, I consider myself more of a libertarian slash paleocon. And I had a lot of things in common with him on, on, on that, you know, broader subject of things, especially when it comes to what's going on under this uh, global totalitarianism, health totalitarianism that's being implemented. And we agree on a, on a lot of things. I guess the only thing that we disagree on is he's more of the pacifist. And uh, at this, I mean, I always consider myself a pacifist, but at this point, man, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like w w how long can we just, just peacefully walk? Because we're being ignored. The media won't cover us. The, our politicians are ignoring us. It's like we don't even exist. Here's what I'll say to that. Uh, pacifist is the way to go. Uh, work through the systems. Stay local. Be vocal. Okay? 
I've said this to you numerous times. You know this. Um, because the media will cover you if it goes stupid. I've seen it IRL. You know, when things get co-opted. Because anytime something's being planned by the right, not the left, uh, the left will always be protected. And what I mean by that, let me rephrase this so I'm clear with everybody. Uh, the neocons and the neoprogs, neoconservatives and the neoprogressives, march in lockstep. They're the same. Mitt Romney's the same as Hillary Clinton. George Bush is the same as Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Not a penny's worth of difference. And like I've said, and you can verify this, years ago, I said Trump bought the West time, whether it be four years or even eight years. Because once he's gone and they get their boy in by hook or crook, and I think we both know how that happened, the Hong Kong totally clean and clear election that he obviously won from his basement, Hong Kong. Um, I, um, I, I saw this coming and even the night of the election, cause you were, I believe on that podcast, not the podcast itself, but on the chat and at, what was it? Three thirty, roughly when all those States said, Oh, we got to close counting. I'm like, fuckery's afoot. Got to go. And there was a reason I said that. And now it's been confirmed. In the totally complete and clear and fair and honest election. You know, Hong Kong. Um, it just, it, it's funny to me how societies move. And remember, one of his, our guys, you know, let's go Brandon, uh, shit in his pants, Joey, Joey Beans, uh, in the Vatican. Um, funniest thing about him was he was promising not to be masked. And, and everybody forgets. I was talking to a fellow brother. I'll talk to you offline on, on this. Um, he was like, well, I remember Trump was big on the, on the, uh, um, pushing, uh, the stabbies. And I was like, hmm, yeah, but you forget, he was bigger on talking about the therapeutics. And then look what they did to Joe Rogan and Tim Pool when they actually used therapeutics that he used. So, and we can't mention all those names of all that stuff, so let's not do that. But therapeutics do exist, and they have stopped people from dying. But we can't talk about that. It's got to be the stabbies we talk about. Your thoughts? Um, many thoughts. Let me see where I can start. First of all, on your thing with buying time, you know, we've talked for a while now, and you know how I'm more on the religious side uh biblical you know christian side and um i remember a conversation i had with my mom just just after after trump got sworn in i was in the car driving her home and i told her exactly this i told her this is just some time that we've been given by god to prepare ourselves spiritually and i told her i straight up told her um there's gonna be an event some sort of major global event that's going to remove the donald and at the same time, bring in, uh, or at least pave the way for uh, a new leader and a new system, and also uh, marginalize the so-called supporters and uh, different thinkers to become the enemy. And I mean, many people have predicted this. Bill Cooper is one of them, and um, I've been following Jay for for a long time on his on his YouTube shows, and he's been talking about this too. So. You know, we're aware that it was going to come, but I, I guess nobody really thought it was going to be a, a, a flu or a cold. And in, uh, in regards to um, Donald, uh, 
you know, people criticize them. And I, I saw the election, and this is going to tie into my next point. But uh, yeah, he, he tried to play both sides. He's a businessman, and I think his heart was in the right place. But he knew that he was being watched, he was being squeezed, there were traps all over the place. And he was trying as much as possible to to balance it out and kind of get his agenda through with all the media BS and all the negativity to somehow still carve out a little bit of positive p- positivity for us and especially America. Now, um, that being said, in regards to to him, uh, the way he was being viewed in, in Europe, uh, I had a very funny experience. Uh, right after we moved here, I, I was sitting at a dinner table with, with some family and friends, and it was just around the time when January 6th happened. And they were like, oh, can you believe this? All these uh, supporters of the Big Donald, you know, extremists, look at what they're doing. They... And I told them, look, this whole thing is a scam. It's a setup. It was just steered in the right direction. And I told them the election was a scam, too. And I showed them, you know, the graphs with the sudden jumps and and votes overnight for for Joey Boy and all this stuff. And you know what happened? I don't know, man, but I I guarantee you, I think I know. I, I bet most well, of them be like, no, it's the most then? honest and fair election ever. No, you know what happened next? I cleared a room of approximately 10 people in less than half a minute. I have never seen anything like it in my entire life. They just left. It went quiet, and they just bailed. And we all went home, and that was it. What well, do you talk to any of them now that they're seeing the destruction of the U.S. since you were here during that time? Or um, did they Bro. just ghost you and say, fuck you, you know, because they're assholes? No, they can't ghost me because I'm, I'm, I'm married to my wife and these are all people every day here in Austria. Um, the funny thing is the attention span is so bad because even in terms of, um, oh, you know, a week before uh, general lockdown in all of Austria was announced, they were swearing left and right on the media, on the radio. No, no more lockdowns. No more lockdowns. Absolutely no more lockdowns. And just a week later, lockdowns again. And it's like, dude, how, like, like are you people just stupid? Or are you, do you have such a short attention span? Or is it both? Or I don't know. I don't get it. How come you're not getting upset about this? I don't care if you're left, right, or in the middle politically, or if that's your favorite party that's running the show right now. But at some point, you got to ask yourself, are they just fucking with us? No, they're not fucking with anybody. They they know their their they know their plurality. Their plurality are the low information voters. They rely on them. And this is what happens when you, okay, I'll just tell you honestly, did you ever read Heinlein's book, Starship Troopers? I did not read the book, but I saw the movie. I know the book is very different from the movie, though. Yeah, but there was one commonality that they talk, and then, of course, all the media and even the director's cut on the movie the director was German, if memory serves, or Austrian. I can't remember which. And they started saying, you know, it's all fascist, you know, that, that kind of thing. And he says that, I think, in the director's cut when you're watching it, within 10, 15 seconds, right? Of the movie, when they're doing the propaganda bullshit. And yet, people fail to realize yep. it was illegal to propagandize in America to the American people until Obabala legalized it. Everybody will say, well, they gave propaganda in World War One and World War Two. Yeah, it was to the military. It just leaked out into society. You can propagandize the military, but not the American people. And then you had willing participants in the media, i.e., oh, what's his name? Uh, from the the artist from um, uh, uh, 
something. I'm mind dumping him right now. Um, where he was like a turkey on every table. He was doing a lot of things for, um, you know, road building and all this stuff. I can't think of his name right now. But a famous, uh, he used to, he used to put him in, shit, I can't even remember the name of the newspaper now. Um, you could get it, you could get calendars of his artwork, and it looks like total Americana, except, you know, he always had a communist bent. And he was a communist. And and the problem was, just like with McCarthy, they vilified him as Tell Gunner Joe, you know. Uh, well, he was a Tell Gunner. First off, if his aircraft got shot down, uh, Tell Gunners have almost 0% survive, survivability. And he flew... 20 missions or over 20 missions and he survived it and that's a rare thing during World War II in both theaters not him in both theaters I'm saying in both theaters that was a reality and so that took balls of steel that clank when he walks but there Everybody forgets Donald Trump's mentor, uh, not Harry, oh shit, what was his name? Just too many names, because I want to throw oh. names out so you understand who I'm talking about. Um, it was one of Trump's mentors, and he also helped out JFK. When JFK actually stood up for... Um, JFK and Robert Kennedy stood up for Joe McCarthy and now Joe McCarthy's the worst thing since anything because he was going after communists in the United States and this is a this is the com international communards the the communist because now they have a foothold and all of Hollywood, academia, it goes back to the Frankfurt School that spread it from border to border in the U.S. And legal theory was the first shot. Then, thanks to Foucault and other people and Gramsci, they started being able to say, oh, well, it's, 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 we need to have some critical race theory. We need to have some critical queer theory. Brother, there was even, I don't know if you saw this, because you're involved in your stuff over there. There was a professor talking about critical pedophile theory, literally. And uh, it's like, okay, so you can, here's my thoughts on that. So you can rob a child of their childhood and defile them and scar them for life, and it's all good? No. No. Sorry. Sorry, that doesn't work that way. Nobody gets to do that to a child. A child is precious. Um, anyways, you know. You know, um, I, I... Go ahead. No, I wasn't saying anything, brother. I, I wanted to hear your thoughts. That's why I said you know, and I just edited I'm this. gonna go on, on a little bit of... I'm going to go on a little bit of on a tangent uh, in regards to abusing kids and all that. Um, uh, since I'm coming from a more spiritual perspective and, um, you know, if any of your listeners are familiar with it, the uh, uh, the children are considered very, you know, pure in the Bible. And I think that the power structure that's running the show right now is very gung ho on abusing and destroying the lives of children and i think there's also a sort of control system uh ingrained in that because they know you know like you said it's a generational warfare and by 
traumatizing kids. Anyone who's seen um, 